U.S. President Barack Obama is putting banks and the rest of Wall Street on notice. He outlined what he calls the rules of the road for the financial industry. Here's what he had to say. But let me be clear. The choice we face is not between some oppressive government-run economy or a chaotic and unforgiving capitalism. Rather, strong financial markets require clear rules of the road, not to hinder financial institutions, but to protect consumers and investors and ultimately to keep those financial institutions strong. Not to stifle, but to advance competition, growth, and prosperity. And not just to manage crises, but to prevent crises from happening in the first place by restoring accountability, transparency, and trust in our financial markets. Now, for more on President Obama's speech last night, we're turning to Salon Simmons. He's a professor at George Mason University's Institute for Conflict Analysis and Resolution. He joins us tonight from Washington. Good to see you. Great to see you, Marcia. So let's play some of the highlights before we get into our conversation of the speech last night. We will rebuild. We will recover. The answers to our problems don't lie beyond our reach. And the time to take charge of our future is here. It is time for America to lead again. We don't do what's easy. We do what's necessary to move this country forward. We are not quitters. All right, so what did you make of his tone and his use of language last night? Well, one of the great, great questions about the speech last night, and this is in part created because Bill Clinton said that he was being a little down on the economy, mm -hmm. was how optimistic was Barack Obama going to be about uh, the economy and, our, and the prospects for the United States? And this whole question of optimism and tone goes back, I think, it's not only about the tone, but it's about the historical comparison. And the comparison is Ronald Reagan. And the reason that, and, and Reagan, we talk about now, after Ronald Reagan, nothing has been the same. And we now talk about Reagan-esque situations, Reagan-esque leaders, and, and people are wondering if there will ever be another Reagan and will there be a Reagan of the left. Interestingly enough, Reagan was the FDR of the Republicans. And this answered a question for me. Watching the speech last night, I decided, you know, I was wondering for a long time, since at least the election, will Obama be more like FDR and therefore like Ronald Reagan to be the great communicator, or will he be more like Jimmy Carter? Because there are many things that he has in relation to Jimmy Carter, the mes message of hope and change, bringing an outsider's perspective to Washington and having a, a Washington which is as good as the American people. All those things were what Jimmy Carter stood for. Even the idea of racial re reconciliation because Jimmy Carter was going to stand for a new South because he was a white man from the South who was not bringing a kind of racist policy. So it seems to me that after this, Obama seems a lot more like FDR than he does like Jimmy Carter. And one of the things that he has that Jimmy Carter didn't have, which is he has this humor and he can tell a joke, and he can crack it at the right time. He did it around the helicopters, the idea that he says, this is my first helicopter. And it's just funny. You realize this is a strange situation he's in. That's what Ronald Reagan was able to do. He's able to take Washington and bring it home to the American people, make it seem like, what would it be like if you were there and if you were president? This is the Mr. Smith Goes to Washington idea, that famous old movie. Obama has that common touch. You know, Jimmy Carter also, the problem with him was he had a little bit of that notion of a, of a Baptist minister who uh, is good on Sunday, but the rest of the six days of the week, Americans like to relax. So Obama it brings that kind of light tone, and yet he doesn't trivialize the situation. He makes us realize how serious it is, and that this is a, this is a ponderous situation, and it's something that's pretty difficult to get over, and ties it to that idea of the quitters. He even had the quip line. He didn't have a great line in his inauguration speech. We don't have anything we remember so much, but this, that, this idea that we are not quitters, it speaks to the Americans, and I think that they're going to remember that and, 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 and uh, rally around it over the long run. We'll probably remember that line for a long time. And he also, there was sort of a light moment when he was talking about the debt and how he didn't want to pass it on to his kids, and then the Republicans started to applaud, and he said, but of course we inherited that. So they right. were also praising him today. What does that tell you? It's a big, this is a very important point because the Republicans are predisposed not to support Barack Obama and his policies. You have to remember how crazy this situation is for a Republican who's a Reagan Republican largely, which is about tax cuts, small government, releasing the energies of the American people, getting big government out of the way. And here we are going exactly the opposite direction from a, a private interest point of perspective to uh, the public purpose, this oscillation between these great swings. We're all the way over, and I think Republicans have not awakened to the situation that the times have turned. This is not Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton could not have been this figure because the times were not ready for it. And now with the crisis, with this collapse, 
with it looking like it's on a trajectory to go into the Great Depression territory, uh, the, the Republicans are predisposed against it, and yet they, they do not attack him. They, they, they realize that it's dangerous to attack him, and he was convincing. He took a very diehard liberal message and made it convincing. We're going to see a lot of Obama Republicans out of this speech, and they realize it, and they're worried about it. All right, I've got time for one last question. Speaking of the sure. Republicans, Bobby Jindal, is he the Republicans' answer to Barack Obama? He made the GOP response last night. Could we possibly, possibly be looking at a showdown between these two men in four years? Uh, if so, I think Barack Obama is going to do very well. Nothing really? against Bobby Jindal. Uh, I, I, I'm not convinced that Bobby Jindal, I mean, I, I saw the speech, I've seen him before. He's young, he's, he's exciting, he's non-white, and yet you don't just want to match non-white with non-white. You need substance. He's got substance, but he's not the kind of charismatic, transcendent figure that Bar Barack Obama is. I think the Republicans are scrambling, and this is one uh, attempt that they've made to match, and I'm not so sure it's quite there. They need to get back to their fundamental ideas, their ideology, and, and, and convince the American people why free markets are the way to go. Salon Simmons, always great to talk to you. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, great to see you, Marcia. Good night.